Thank you for listening to Comedy at the Creek Podcast, presented by Country Creek Reception Hall. I'm your host, Jason Pierpoint. Today's guest is Justin Hicks from Okemos, Michigan. So, podcast. All right, let's do it. <laughs> um, yeah, basically, I just uh, figured we'd hook up a Comedy at the Creek podcast and uh, get these local comedians that are cruising through, you know, and talk to them a little bit, find out what's yeah. going on in their lives and where they're performing and all that and you know do some uh shows and have yeah some you fun. got a pretty good lineup tonight i don't have um everybody on there but i know a few of them that re led better um it's my fiance's favorite um that <laughs> she's met so far craig mccoy um he's always pretty solid so there's there's some good names tonight i'm excited to see these guys i can man uh but all right for those of you out here we have a really special guest he was here last uh comedy at the creek we have justin hicks from you're okamas right okamas yep thank you having, for having me on too uh i appreciate it man yeah, no problem hey first time around we'll make this thing work <laughs> or we'll crash and burn or whatever <laughs> i'm good but, with either uh, so how many of the comedians so far since uh you've been on the first one and this one have you performed with um since then like yeah, or, from the first show and from this show, you said you've uh, performed with Ree before. Yep, Ree. Um, I performed in Flint with her uh, for Mark Bonto at a Funny Spot show. He always has some great shows. If you're ever in the area, check those out. Um, but uh, yeah, she put on a great show there. Um, Craig McCoy, I see him all the time in Wald Lake. Um, Tom Swan puts on a open mic competition out there now, um, okay. and Craig hosts a lot. Um, does a lot of his sets there, um, and. The first time I performed here last month, pretty much that whole lineup was uh, the guys that were from Beggars Can't Be Choosers. Yeah. Um, the first night I had ever gone there, too. So uh, that was the first and second time I ever really performed with those guys as well. Yeah. Well, you know, I, jumping on and, and deciding to do this, I was like, you know, I got to find comedians because me coming from the music business, I was like, I don't know a lot of comedians. Mm -hmm. So I just basically like got online to Facebook and I'm like, all right, I'm just going to have to poach them from somewhere. So. <laughs> Yeah, and that's yeah, kind of how it was. <laughs> Just one day, this guy sends me a message saying, hey, you want to do this show this day? I was like, I'll take anything at this point right now. <laughs> so, yeah, whatever. It might get murdered. I don't know. Well, you're not and the it, only one. <laughs> <laughs> there must there probably was like maybe 30 or 40 people. Just that first month, I was just sending them messages out of the blue. I'm like, dude, <laughs> hey, I got this thing going. You know, would you be interested in performing? They're like, who the fuck is this guy? Yeah, I, I ran into... Uh, one of the other comedians, I can't remember his name. I did run into one at, I, I believe it was Crunchy's, um, before the show, and he was saying the same thing. He's like, "Yeah, I, uh, I don't really know how it's gonna go, who it is, what's going on, but I'm going." I was like, "Okay, cool. At least I won't be the only one getting murdered. At least." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Crunchy show show was pretty fun. That was I, I heard that uh, you know around the Lansing area, it's kind of hard to get on the Max show. Yeah, it yeah. seems like it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, I think I applied for everything in January and tried to get in February. I didn't get in either one of those, but I got that, you know, beggars, beggars banquet gig in January. So. Yeah, yeah, and I've noticed the same thing because I'll go on to message them, and I'm like, oh, not responded to, not responded to the last, like, four months. I'm like, okay, maybe one day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I just keep chugging at it. You know, yeah, that's what I figured. Beggars uh, was planning on doing that uh, this past Thursday. They canceled it. Um so I'm hoping to get back up there again. He said he'll get us all back on next month. So yeah. um, be back up over there. And uh, Crunchies is, is fairly easy to get on to as yeah. well. They usually have quite a bit of space. Yeah, I get to do Crunchies on the 27th, I think. I get to do okay. Crunchies. The weekly crunch, is that what that is? Yep. Yeah, cool. Good deal. That's kind of the same setup, right? It's just kind of an open mic. You go up there and do your five or so minutes. Yep, I think they give you seven. Um, go up there. It's definitely a little more of a conservative crowd compared to like beggars um yeah. seems like that's more of uh, the college students that don't they don't let you get away with a whole lot it doesn't seem like people still do it it's a great show we it's a great time up there but they're like where's the karaoke yeah, <laughs> every now and then they're a little little apprehensive but you can usually crack them yeah well that's cool that sounds like a lot of fun so um with that in mind so how long have you been doing this um so on and off for probably about five years now. Oh, okay. Um, most, mostly these last six months, um, I've my fiance's actually given me the opportunity to um, stay home and focus more on comedy. So I've been able to get out there a lot more um, the last six months. Um, so really, I've been doing it for six months. That's what I've been saying. Writing for years now. Yeah, big comedy fan growing up. Oh yeah. What Loved kind of it. stuff did you get into when you were growing up? <laughs> 
the first one I remember is a blue collar comedy tour, all that. That was the first one I remember just quoting all the lines, all the Larry the Cable guy, Ron White <laughs> stuff. And Ron White's still one of my favorites. He, I mean, he came out of that. and oh, Nobody's better than him, I don't yeah. think. Um, but there was those guys. I remember everybody liking Dane Cook, but I couldn't get into Dane Cook. I, oh, okay. I remember passing him up. Um, he was kind of a spastic. <laughs> oh, I, I didn't get it. I just didn't get it. Bouncing off the walls, like yeah. caffeine fueled. There was comedy. there was no jokes. Yeah. <laughs> you just said stuff and did shit. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I just I couldn't keep up. Um, beyond that, I'm trying to remember. I, I I feel like I lost comedy there for a while, um, and then kind of picked it back up in college with uh, like Tom Segura, um, Bill Burr, obviously. Oh yeah. Um, Doug Stanhope, love Doug Stanhope. Um, so a lot of those guys kind of in that crowd. Um, Hey, that's not a bad lineup. Yeah. How about you? What do, who do you like? Well, I, how old are you? Uh, 29. Okay. See, I'm a little. I'm, I'm 44. I just turned 44 last December. Okay. So yeah. you know, when I was growing up, I was listening to a lot of the shit that I shouldn't have been listening to. You know, we had all the old uh, George Carlin albums. Oh, okay. You know, I, I was a huge George Carlin fan when I was just you know a teenager. <laughs> so we were listening. No, we then at that time we were stealing records. You know, back before <laughs> CDs, because a lot of that stuff you couldn't even get on CD for a while. And, you know, because you, you had to get the old records from the antique shops. But uh, I love George Carlin, you know, Richard Pryor, you know, all the oh, greats. Yeah, of course, you know, yeah. and Christopher Titus was a big guy for me, too. I loved him. See, I've, I've heard the name a bunch of times, and I've seen people go in to see him, but I've, I don't think I've ever seen any of his comedy. Yeah. I don't, have, you, have you seen any of the any of the guys that you grew up? Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, recently, we did see Ron White uh, earlier this year. Um, Bill Burr earlier this oh, year. Oh, you got to see Bill? Oh, oh yeah. I that was my that be amazing. second time seeing it. I mean, he's just phenomenal. I was but, pretty fortunate to get to see um, George Carlin when he was in you? East Lansing at the at the Lansing Center. Or it wasn't the Lansing Center. It was um, – Wharton Center? It was at the Wharton Center, yeah. Okay. And that was like you were all disease tour, I think it was. Okay. That would have been a good one. He would have been great to see. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He um, was a legend. Like uh, – uh, what's his name? Um, Dice. Anthony Dice Clay. Oh, wow. <laughs> Did you see any of the documentaries about him lately uh -uh. that came out? Oh, man, they were they were talking about him running all sorts of people off over the years, just everybody in arms about how terrible he was and how <laughs> much of a womanizer he was. I'm like, it's comedy, man. Yeah, I mean, it, it was a character. Look yeah. look him up, dude. That is all on stage. I mean, what he did off stage, I don't know or really give a shit. But Well, they're the pioneers. You know, was, you, you can't. <laughs> he was a kind of nerdy, goofy guy. <laughs> he had to build it up. Yeah. Um, so what what kind of comedy? I mean, I've obviously seen you, but maybe the listeners haven't. So what 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 kind of comedy like gets you going? Like, what do you really are inspired by? I mean, honestly, writing is my favorite. Um, uh, comedy aside, uh, or uh, comedians aside, I should say, um, just writing and making people laugh is just my favorite. What I like to do. Um, so seeing other comedians obviously like the bill burrs and all that getting those laughs and doing it that that's um definitely inspiring to me that uh, that joint i smoked is jeff uh, starting to hit right now <laughs> <laughs> you're good man <laughs> well that's cool did you start out with a, the stand-up comedy format when you started writing or was it just mm -mm. just like long form just whatever came to mind that was you know cracking you up yep so i have I was actually just talking to my fiance about this, thinking back to my first bits that I wrote, my first jokes. They were just god awful. <laughs> and I remember just being so excited. I had notebooks full of just garbage and tried it on stage my first time. I don't remember how it went. I just know I got pushed off the stage because I didn't know what the light meant. So I was like, what is you're going to have to tell me what that means, dude. And <laughs> they didn't. So I just kept going. Um, and then that gave me kind of a shock where I was like, this isn't what I thought it was going to be. That didn't go uh, the way I had planned and contemplated just not doing it again. Sucked it up, went back to the same place the next week and actually did fairly well. Wrote real jokes. Uh, didn't drink before. That helped. <laughs> <laughs> um, so and that after getting that, got laughs at that one, it, that just took off. And that's where I was like, okay, I'm doing this. Yeah. Um, took like a four-year break after that. And then that's about where it led up to these last six months. And that's where I've been really hitting it hard and finally figuring out my writing. It was very, I don't have a formula. I never read a comedy book, anything like that. I just wrote. Um, and then I just whittle down, whittle down, um, watch videos, everything like that. And then just trim the fat, cut it out. And 
nothing had gone as well as it did until the show that I did for you guys uh, last month. That's where it all came together. Everything clicked. And since then, I've just been like, yep, fully balls to the wall now. So, Good deal. Um, I was excited to get that message from you to come out tonight. Um, I was hoping it was to perform tonight <laughs> because I was like, oh, damn, man. When I saw the poster for it, I was like, shit. It's like I was hoping we'd, uh, we'd be doing that again. Um, so I was a little bummed about that, but I mean, that's just because it was so much fun last time. So getting the message from you to come tonight was, I was excited about that. Well, I thought about doing this for a while now. And then I was like, well, if I'm putting that first show together, I probably should concentrate on figuring out how to do that first. Because then if I try to do all this at the same time, I'm like, okay, everything, something's going to crash and burn. So maybe <laughs> I should just see how it goes the first time around and then maybe try to set it up. But you know, I figured it'd be good to have you out because you were on the first show. So, you know, there's possibility if you're going to be on a show here in the future, you know, we can just put the podcast out and see if people are digging it, you know, and yeah. maybe get some people come out and check it out. And, of course, I, I have to make a spectacle out of everything. So I figured <laughs> I'd do it right on the stage in front of everybody. Dude, I'll tell you, you're a hell of a promoter. When I found out, um, in case you guys don't know, whoever listens to this, uh, Jason's only done stand-up, you said, what, four times? Now? Yeah, yeah, this tonight will actually be like my fifth time, fifth time. total. <laughs> and you're you're – this is your second show here, and you're going to have another full crowd. Last time was, what, 150 some people? Yeah, I think we were, like, over two. Over 200. Yeah. Holy shit. Probably yeah. going to be about the same tonight, and you've done stand-up five fucking times. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll see. I mean, like like I said, I've been playing music for a long time, so, you know, being on Still. stage, it doesn't that doesn't really bother me. But, you know, I don't have a band to blame shit on now. <laughs> So if I'm standing up here by myself being a dumbass, you know, and I don't have, I can't turn around and be like, you <laughs> fucked up, dude. I mean, you can. They're just going to think you're a schizo. So. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. <laughs> I just like to have fun with it, man. I like to meet people and, you know, and talk to people and find out what kind of shit people got going on. And it's just, it's interesting, you know, especially getting started myself. You know, I can talk to other people that have been doing it for a while and could pick their brains and be like, hey, dude, you know, what do you, how do you do this? Or how do you do that? You know, it just helps everybody, I think. Yeah. You yep. know, I've, I've heard some rumors from some people. They're like, oh, well, you know, it seems to be that you just are interested in having everybody out, you know, and that's kind of weird because the scene can be kind of clicky sometimes. And I'm like, with comedy? I mean, You're I making gotta, it clicky. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. that comment right there. Like, yeah. It's like <laughs> clicky. It's like one person, you know. You're one, doing one the opposite doing of what clicky is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and they're right. telling you, it's, I, I, I don't get it. I don't know. Yeah, so that's why people ask me, you know, when I, I send them messages. I didn't enough to understand that one. <laughs> I send them messages, you know, and they're like, well, what kind of comedy are you looking for? I was like, I don't give a shit. Funny. You know, I had somebody the other day, he's like, well, I got some clean comedy, you know, is that going to be all right? And I was like, yeah, that's gonna be perfectly fine with me, dude. I was like, if you don't mind being on stage with people that are going to probably tell dick and shit <laughs> jokes, you know. And then uh, I, I fuck with everybody. I'm like, yeah, just don't bring any puppets because nobody's got time for that <laughs> shit. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, we saw a guy... He did song covers, <laughs> like Creed with legs wide open. Oh, <laughs> oh wow! Well, you know, hey, there's I'm, if there's an audience for it, why not? There wasn't. There isn't. <laughs> I don't think there has been yet. He's still looking for it. No, um, no. But, oh, I feel bad. He was. Oh God, it was it was rough. But I mean, yeah. yeah I, but it's great to have a some kind of variety. I mean, yeah. you're always going to have some different uh, with 200 people you're not everybody's not going to be laughing at the same things yeah, yeah so having a variety fuck the clicks like, <laughs> you, if it's clicky you're making it clicky it, just let people perform yeah like yeah. people are going to suck sometimes people are going to do good sometimes it's, shit, it's comedy well that's why i thought it was interesting getting everybody from you know there were veterans that have been doing it for you know there was somebody last month that was here that was, had been done doing comedy for 30 years and then you got me who's been doing comedy, you know, since last Thursday, <laughs> you know, so it's like cool to be able to watch and see all the different types of comedians, you know, and, and it's, it's just cool. I'm, I'm running out of comedians from the Lansing area. I'd like to be able to get some more people from local, but I can definitely recommend some to you um, if you want to talk about that after. Um, but yeah, and uh, why not give people the chance to perform yeah. in front of a large crowd? Yeah. I mean, I, I never had anything, anything like that. I came to this show expecting there to be like 20 people because i didn't know you i didn't know anything else we were just like okay we're showing up and then you messaged me saying like this is gonna be a good turnout showed up i about shit myself <laughs> but like i'm very thankful for that opportunity because it gave me a chance to really figure out my style and you know really put it together so why not give everybody that chance I'd yeah give me an opportunity i'm sure i'll fuck it up sooner or later <laughs> 
<laughs> well, fuck, man. I'll but, fuck up anything twice. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. <laughs> but, yeah, um, so what what do you got going on? You got anything interesting going on coming up here pretty soon? or? Um, not a whole lot on the horizon. Um, we were actually recently on a vacation, have another vacation coming up, and shows that I wanted to do aligned with both of those. Um, so I wasn't able to do a whole lot. Uh, we did do crunchies Monday night, was going to do beggars Thursday. All that shit got fucked up. Yeah. Um, so it was going to be a fairly busy week, but, um, ended up not, uh, next week. I believe I'll be at Tom Swan's, uh, in Wald Lake, uh, the beach tiki bar. Um, he does a open mic competition there. Um, so you bring enough people, they pay out, I think up to 50 bucks for the winner. Um, audience votes on it. So. Hoping to go up there, finally win one, maybe. I always get second. <laughs> was there a – I saw something on your Facebook. Was there, like, an online competition or something you were in? Or was that an in-person comedy competition? Uh, the one that I shared saying, like, help me win some money? Yeah. Yeah, that was the uh, same show. Oh, that was an in-person thing. Okay. Yep, all in person I've there. seen some. I've seen a few of them floating around here and there that were, like, online competitions, and I'm like, how does that work? I, I couldn't do it. Yeah, like you're like trying to Zoom. tell jokes into a phone or something like that. And <laughs> I, I guess. I, don't, I remember seeing people do it during COVID. I'd never tried it out. I was like, that's just too weird. Yeah. And for the most part, it seemed like it didn't really work. But, you know, people will keep trying anything. They'll be doing it in the metaverse here soon. <laughs> well, it's one of those things where you have to have the energy of the people that are sitting in front of you. You know, even if it's only like 20 people and other comedians, you still got to get a little bit of that feedback. Yeah. Uh, the laughs don't sound the same coming through a speaker. Yeah, it, it's very different, <laughs> especially when you're, you're, you're doing the comedy in front of the other comedians, you know, and you get the oh, and then you're like, OK, well, maybe that one didn't work. <laughs> Try again next time. I can't I couldn't do it from home. I'd be getting heckled by my fiance from the other room. My daughter, probably. She's only two, but she'd be in there. Yeah, Call me an up. asshole or stupid or something. <laughs> Tell me fun. a knock, knock. Joke. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. Well, that's cool. Yeah, it's it's been fun so far. I've had a good time. So, um, so real quick, so how did you get hooked up uh, with this venue with uh, what, Country Creek? Is that what it's called? Yeah, there? this is Country Creek. Um, Country Creek's in Diamonddale for the listeners out there. You can hear the people in the background. Like I said, we're actually doing this a live podcast in front of people that are rolling in. We're going to start here about eight o'clock, so uh, you can hear the people in the background. Um, I don't think they can hear us though, right? Can they? No, they can't oh, hear us. I, yeah, everything's going through, <laughs> through the board here. So we're hoping. <laughs> If not, they'd be like, wow, what are these, what are these guys standing up yeah, there we, talking about? Yeah, we can't delete what they hear. We can delete that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no doubt. But, um, no, Kim, she's the owner of this place. Um, my wife and I actually got married here. Oh, good and deal. And Kim was a good friend of our family. So back when I, like I said, when I started doing comedy last year, um, I kind of got thrown into the fire and did a feature act for my first time on stage. And I was like, well, <laughs> of I better cut my teeth doing something a little more normal with some open mics. And I did some checking around, you know, and you know, the open mics are all the way out in, you know, Ann Arbor, they're all the way out in Grand Rapids and Detroit and stuff mm-hmm. like that, which is cool if I don't have to work. But when you got a full time job, you know, it's hard to get out to those places and for an hour and a half drive for five minutes, which I mean, I'm not going to make a career of this. You mm-hmm. know, this is something I just love and enjoy doing. So I thought about it and I'm like, well, you know, I'm just going to do what I've always done and just put something together myself. Yeah. And when I originally came to her, I was like, hey, you know, do you have a week night or something where you don't have anything going on. You know, I can bring 10 comedians in here and we can tell each other jokes. And she's like, let's do it on a Friday. <laughs> and then that shit happened last month. So, I don't know. Hell yeah, man. It, 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 it's great. It's worked out very well, I think. So, I hope it keeps rolling. Yeah. So, if you listen to this, we're doing it once a month. So, hit me up. <laughs> yeah. Definitely follow. Uh, you got a Facebook page for yeah, it, Yeah, right? we got a Facebook page. Uh, you know, it's called Comedy at the Creek. You can go there and check it out. Um, email is the same. Comedy at the Creek. Gmail.com. You can get a hold of me there. Um, hit us up, like us up on Facebook. I, I'm only doing Facebook right now because I don't have enough time and I'm 44 years old, dude. I don't know shit about Instagram or Twitter oh, or no. whatever the fuck all that shit's going on. I tried to do Twitter. I, I, I can't, it's just too much of an effort, man. <laughs> like you used to be able to just post like something funny, get a couple retweets. Now you got to post something long and political or some shit. And I'm, I'm, I'm over it. I'm done. I yeah. can't. Elon Musk is actually kind of funny though, of you. Oh, hey, I hope Look he lets it loose. Tweet. Let yeah. it loose, you know. Very and, surprised. And, yeah, <laughs> just let it, you know, r- bring back the Wild West as far as I'm concerned. That's part of the reason why I've, been, I've loved comedy, and I, it's so exciting seeing comedy start to rise again mm-hmm. because it's just kind of a pushback of all the political bullshit, you know, everybody crying and whining, being a victim for this, a victim for that. 
you know, when there's like real victims for shit, like oh, yeah. Monday, you oh, know, yeah, people yeah. are crying and whining, and, you know, that you're, you're bitching about, you know, where they can go or what they can say and stuff like that. And then the stuff like that happens, you know, that's real tragedy. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's nice to have comedy, you know, to be able to push back on the little shit that is just driving people nuts. Yep, exactly. And that's what's nice about tonight too, is, um, with the Thursday night open mic being canceled, uh, I heard that there was a bunch of MSU students that had been looking forward to going. Um, and we're bummed when it got canceled because they wanted the distractions, just a night out, stuff like that. So I'm hoping they were able to hear about tonight and get out. And I think I think everybody needs it, needs some laughs. And I'm also going to give some um, uh, some props to the people at Crunchies on Monday night. Um, we were doing the open mic right when everything started over there. And, I mean, they kept everybody safe first off. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, the crowd, everybody, it was – Everybody was able to play along, understand. I mean, people got away with some jokes, everything like that. It was it was a good distraction for something that was actively happening. I imagine, and, yeah. Uh, I imagine it was probably a nightmare over there, you know, even days later. I mean, it's probably just a mess. But, yeah. you know, I definitely – thoughts go out to all them people over there, you know. That's just, it's, it's too much. You know, there was stuff going on here in Diamonddale over the past couple of days. So. Mm -hmm. Just the world we live in, it's just great to be able to laugh and, and laugh at everything as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> exactly. And, yeah, we need it right now. <laughs> we yeah. need something happy. Can't read the news. You can't go anywhere without seeing just depressing shit. So <laughs> yeah. that's, that's what's good about comedy is, I mean, you can laugh at other people's depression. You can get your own depression out. and It's good for everybody. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> Well, how can people get a hold of you if they want to get a hold of you for booking and, and whatnot? Um, you can uh, hit me up on Facebook, um, just Justin Hicks. I don't have a professional page yet. Um, Twitter, I believe it's at J underscore Hicks one. Okay. Um, I might have to get back to you on that one. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I, I don't have a whole lot. If anybody wants to hit me up, Facebook is definitely the best way or for now, you know jason hit jason up he'll relay the message for me yeah yeah that's no problem i try to you know with all these comedians and i'm meeting people i'm meeting i've been telling everybody hey just you know throw me what you got going on you know i'll put it on the comedy at the creek page or i'll put it on my own personal page i don't care yeah you know get the word out there and get everybody out and, and working and getting as much mic time as they can yeah but, you know i was going to ask you um how exactly with your writing process and that um how do you go about like putting together the majority stuff that you're going to work out? Like, is it weird to go into these open mics and then like you see the same people and you're like, are they going to get sick of the same five fucking minutes of material that I have? Like I have that problem so far. I'm like the people that come out and see me, they're like, Oh my God, you just told the same three jokes like the past three times I've seen you. And I, maybe that's why they tell you not to bring your friends and family. <laughs> Yeah, and that and that is definitely uh, one of the fears I had at first is because every single open mic I'd go to, I came up with a different five minutes, a different five minutes, and it just it, it would all go okay. Nothing ever went great. Nothing ever was worked out or um, well thought out. Um, and then eventually, I was I kept hearing from people, you need just like a good five minutes, get a good five minutes, work it out, and then get a good fifteen. And that kind of started to sink in where I was like, okay, I just need to work out this amount of time with these jokes, whatever. And just from there, just whittled it down, trim fat. Um, and then just really thinking about like, I, I don't care if they've heard the same jokes before. This is more for me. I'm here to work out my own timing, my, my wording and my own comfortability. It took me forever to get comfortable on stage and I'm still not always completely comfortable but yeah. you kind of just have to suck it up and be like well sorry if you've heard them just you're gonna do it again uh craig i've heard probably his jokes probably 15 times <laughs> but i'm excited still excited to see him tonight to see how it goes with uh more of a crowd because a lot of times it's been open mics with just comedians there things like that so um it, it, you've got to do it you got to repeat jokes you if you want a good worked out um set you you have to work it out you have to yeah. repeat the same things and i've noticed also that helps with like crowd work a little more improv once you're able to have those jokes as like yes right there ready to go and you're not like thinking about it trying to remember um you're able it, it, it it's a lot more freedom yeah well i noticed you know the when i performed with you over there at um the beggar's banquet you know, and then you came here last month, and I noticed, you know, right off the bat, you know, you're making observations about the room. 
you know, I thought that was kind of awesome right off. You know, you were able just to get that snap right off, even though it wasn't something you probably even prepared for. That's probably, I think, what I might need to work on a little bit with mine, you know, is just like being able to come off the cusp, you know, and have stuff. And to be honest, uh, as soon as I got here, I just kind of started looking at things and um, watching people just started observing everything. So a lot of those uh, the right off the top, I did have that planned but not until i got here a little bit later yeah. um stuff like that the flannels thing i think i remember if you, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the white people in the flannels that one was uh off the cuff on uh on stage right there but comedian yeah. brain just finding something to fucking pick on right yep. off the bat <laughs> <laughs> pretty much i like uh, i one of my uh first ever paid shows that i did um i still hadn't worked out my own style and jokes yet and I saw another guy go up, and the first thing that he did was um, point out things about the venue and about the bar and um, just kind of get right into that, and it just it killed. And I was like, I love that. That was great. And I kind of just picked that up from that guy, whatever if you want to call it, stealing. But <laughs> it's a, it was great. I liked it. I don't know if that's a thing. There's a term, whatever. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I, I, I just like doing that, like um, um, just kind of getting – it feels like it, you get people involved a little bit quicker. Yeah, yeah, I probably sound like I'm explaining something that every comedian's that like, yeah, dude, we fucking know everybody does that. <laughs> <laughs> you, you try to do a good mix of like, I noticed some of the stuff that you were talking about with like your family and then observational stuff. You know, do you like to tend to move towards like family oriented? I mean, you said that you were you're just like a stay at home dad. Yep. Oh, oh I yeah. bet oh, you get a slew of material it. for that, huh? I am loving it, man. And then that's that's part of the problem is I, I write too much sometimes. <laughs> so I have trouble whittling it down and then taking it to the stage yeah. because I'm like, well, it's just going to eat up too much time and I'm not going to be able to do this, this and this. But So I'm still trying to get myself to just be like, yeah, fucking just do it. Do seven minutes on your kid if you need to. Yeah. Um, well, they give you so much material. Oh, my gosh. Little so toddlers much. running around. They look like little drunks. You can get a lot of stuff from that. Oh, man. She's like... She's like a robot that, like a voice command one that doesn't, it kind of malfunctions quite a bit. Like, I'll, she gets it most of the time, but then, you know, I'll tell her, like, hey, no, you know, don't pee there. And <laughs> yeah. uh, she just goes anyway. So, <laughs> Heck yeah. well, it's got to be fun. Hey, you know. No, I love it. I got a sugar mama. That's the, <laughs> the best part about it. So, and she does sugar mama shit. So, we have fun. <laughs> um, Good deal. Well, cool, man. You know, hey, it was a great, great time talking to you. Uh, like I said, everybody check out Justin Hicks, you know, and go to his Facebook page. And what, what you said, you got Facebook. And I know you have some stuff on YouTube because I've seen that. Yep. Um, I, I don't know how much of it I have public. A lot of it I just kept private just so I could use to send a few people. Um, but, yeah, I do have a um, YouTube page. It's Justin, I think, at J Hicks Comedy okay. or Justin Hicks Comedy, something like that. Um, I got a handful of videos on there. Um, but, yeah, Facebook would be the best way to reach me um, or my manager, my fiance. <laughs> <laughs> That's what she says she's going to do she's now. over so. there sitting there glaring at you like, I got enough shit to do without dealing with yeah, your crap. All the money's got to go through her, so anything. <laughs> I well, don't get cool. it. Well, cool, man. It was, like I said, it was good talking to you, dude. We you know, knocked one out here, the number one uh, for the Comedy at the Creek podcast. So we're definitely going to be excited to see Justin come back, um, hopefully sooner than later. But um, thank you for listening to the very first Comedy at the Creek podcast, and we will check you guys out yeah, and definitely, maybe next month. Yeah, follow the pages, um, the uh, Comedy at the Creek um, Oh, shit, I was going to say something else. That's too, probably about, that's about all I got that's, going yeah. on. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Leave us some comments, likes, whatever, wherever this is going. Let us know if you want us to do this again, too, if it was entertaining enough for you. <laughs> Good I'm deal. definitely down, so let me know. All right, man. Well, you take it easy.